Oh no, I put it back on. I didn't know. But I put it on my Oh, he went back. Oh, right. So cool. She's mad. Welcome to my channel, Outspoken Samantha. If you are new here, welcome. I appreciate you clicking on the video to watch it. And since you're here, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button as well and help me to grow this channel. And if you're returning, welcome back. I truly do appreciate your continued support on my channel and I hope that you are subscribed as well. Well, the degeneracy, depravity, and utter insanity of society continues and it just seems to be something that is just not in short supply these days. In the video, you can see the baby is newly born, the nurse hands the baby to the mother who bought and paid for another woman to carry and deliver the baby for them because the mother who wants a baby is unable to carry a baby for themselves. And this sounds like it's probably a typical surrogacy story, or at least the scenario that most of us imagine as the main reason for surrogacy, as with mostly everything else that has been normalized that started out as questionable at best. It has completely devolved and spiraled down downward into something that I would not say is heroic. I would not say is courageous. And honestly, I would say at this point, it is in that realm as, of completely evil and depraved. So let's have a look at this couple that just welcomed this new baby into the world. Oh, no, I put it back on. I know. Oh, he went back. Oh, right. Oh, 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 there she goes. Oh, yeah. So cool. She's mad. She was so sad. Yeah. 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 I think the baby's face says what we're all thinking right now. And I don't know about you guys, but that is just really hard to watch. And I have to say that surrogacy is honestly something I haven't really thought that much about until the last few years. Because perhaps, at least in my mind, it was something that seemed like it was a relatively rare occurrence and something that was either used by couples who couldn't conceive and carry a baby on their own, but again, wanted some a baby that was fully biologically theirs. And I also primarily, I think, associated it with celebrities who wanted children of their own when they got older and couldn't or didn't want to go through a pregnancy. And then the other portion of the Hollywood elite women who didn't want to put their physical image at risk by putting their body through the changes that come with carrying a baby. But again, it isn't something that I ever thought was that common. And I'm not saying that because it's infrequent, it means it's okay. But I've just been focused on, I guess, all the other ways that children and babies are being exploited and dehumanized, that this was something just a little further out on my radar. However, this particular scenario is exactly why we need to be paying attention to this issue as much as anything else regarding babies, children, and families. Babies and children need their mothers. That bond between particularly women and their children cannot be replaced by anything else. It is absolutely crucial and it is so unfortunate because it seems like particularly in women that we that if we see so many women devalue that bond and they honestly i feel like women have been the primary leaders in severing that connection and belittling it to the point that it's just almost non-existent and it's something that we don't even need to think about anymore simply being a grown adult who can wrap a baby in a blanket and feed them food does not even come close to what it is that babies actually need to thrive. And what this continues to demonstrate is how disconnected from our own humanity that we've become. This is literally the renting of a woman's body and the selling and even the trafficking of a baby, of her baby. And she is the one that is allowing it to happen. She is the primary source of it. It's absolutely unfathomable to me that the connection between a woman and her baby now has a price tag. It is something that she is willing 
going to sell. This baby has been bought and paid for like it's a department store purchase or like it's a puppy from a local pet shop. And it's interesting because these leftist women constantly accuse women on the right of wanting to create a life for women in America that looks like something out of The Handmaid's Tale. But what do you think this is? I mean, yes, these women are choosing it and yes, they're being paid, but they are literally taken, taking an order for a baby, renting out their womb to grow that baby and then handing it over like that baby can bond with anyone and that her connection to this infant doesn't exist. And this is how little the people who purchase the baby actually have to take this seriously as they just roll around in a wheelchair and play games while the woman with the rented uterus actually has to deal with the emotional, physical and mental toll of knowing she is about to deliver a baby that she will be immediately separated from. Yeah, I mean, she's supposed to write it down. Like, I she's supposed to write it down the ramp, but she'll be fine. I, I say we don't Come back. Oh my gosh, I got scary feet. Go Those, so it rolls really yeah. easily yeah. too. Yeah, he also has feet that's not fixed. Come on, Brianna. I'm coming. I will share my chair. I mean, your chair. I mean, thank you for sharing your chair. I need you to push my little foot pedal down. They don't stay down. Yeah, they I know. Have your feet have to be on it. So once you sit, I think for any woman who watches that and you have given birth before, you probably felt that discomfort in your soul as you were watching it because I know I did. And another one of them holding the baby like they just did all the work. Don't cover me up. Oh. Oh. Daddy, quit messing with me. But I can't hold it. Look at my hands compared to his whole body. Poor baby, he's so little. Five pounds and ten ounces. Really? Almost two inches long. Mm -hmm. Hello. You can keep holding it. Let's do a couple things on him okay. while you hold it. Okay. Mm -hmm. What do you have to do to him? Um, can use this blood sugar test. Okay. Um, and then I'm just going to get blood pressure and temperature. Okay. You can hear this person's partner call him daddy, which I think is just going to inevitably present a whole slew of issues for this kid. Just growing up confused and completely disconnected from what is real. And this baby is only a couple of hours old and they're already being used for monetization on TikTok. And by the way, this is not just a criticism of this particular couple for doing this because using your children on social media for content is gross and should be banned. But it's almost like they're saying, here's my prop. Look at the toy I just purchased. Tune into the next episode of what, what it looks like for a man who thinks he's a woman to raise a baby that he bought. But let me show you the highlight reel of my life so I can make this seem glamorous and influence other people to believe that this is normal and okay and that this will bring you rainbows and unicorn farts as well. Sorry guys, but I will use every opportunity I can to say the words unicorn farts. And if it's not already off the charts in just cringy weirdness, they are now using their baby as a prop while they try to sell their hair care products. I think it's good for you guys to see that, you know, like, yes, I still have hair. Yes, it's still healthy. It's still long. It's still growing. But um, it's just not my preference. So you don't have to be scared if you're like, oh, I really want to try it, but I'm scared. Apparently, this individual does work in a salon and may actually own the salon and sells shampoo and conditioner. So that's what they're pretty much doing here. I mean, order shampoo, order a baby. It's kind of becoming the same thing. But on the issue of surrogacy and why I why this really needs to be something that we are talking about more and really starting to call out um, what it means and what the implications of it are. I saw this post by Kaylee Triller and I wanted to read through it with you because I thought she had some really great points to make. She says, the minute you say surrogacy is wrong, someone will show up in your timeline with a tug at the heartstring story about their boss's sister sister's infertility. And they'll tell you how happy the surrogate was to help and about how deeply loved the baby is. And how dare you presume to tell other women what to do with their bodies and how can you be so unfeeling and hateful? 
And then there's really no point in engaging any further because you're thinking about the big picture and they're thinking about that sweet little baby at the office Christmas party. Of course, the answer no one really wants to hear is that it's not about you or your feelings. It's about the preservation of human rights, about realizing that it's actually not okay to sell humans to the highest bidder, even if their parents really, really want a baby. It's about realizing that commodifying women's bodies always leads to women's oppression. So even if your boss's sister situation turned out okay, her sob story is being leveraged to justify legislation that gets countless other humans trafficked across the globe. Surrogacy pregnancies are high-risk pregnancies. Studies show that women pregnant with donor eggs, very common in surrogate pregnancies, the definition of gestational surrogacy, have a more than three-fold risk of developing pregnancy-induced hypertension and preeclampsia. Children born through surrogacy are much more likely to suffer from low and very low birth weights. In addition, a 2014 study from the Journal of Parentology found a four- to five-fold increase in stillbirths from pregnancies through assisted reproduction productive technologies. But who cares? It's some other poor woman's body, right? I mean, one of the cardinal rules of parenting is to place your child's needs first. But in surrogacy scenarios, no one really seems to care that this baby has literally been chemically bonded to the surrogate for the better part of a year, only to be ripped away a day or two after birth. We treat puppies better than this. Infertility has been around since the first book in the Bible. It's an age-old, very painful problem. But the new problem is that people aren't thinking rightly about the ethical implications of surrogacy. The harsh truth is that parenting is a privilege, not a right. And even our deepest desires do not justify our choice to infringe on the rights of others. We must be content to live in a world where we don't always get what we want. In this case, the commodification of another woman's body in order to intentionally inflict a primal wound on a child who deserves so much more. And obviously, none of this is to minimize the pain of infertility. None of, none of this is to say that we don't understand that not being able to have a baby of your own is very, very, very painful for a lot of women and very painful for a lot of couples. But what's astonishing to me is all of these arguments involving fertility, infertility, wanting to be a parent, not wanting to be a parent, whatever it is, is that far too often we forget the most important person. We leave the most important being out of the equation, and that is the baby, the little human being that does not have a voice, that cannot speak for themselves, and all of the people that are speaking for babies are speaking against what they actually need and against their well-being. When in actuality, it's the baby, it's the most innocent person in this equation, it's their needs that should be the top priority. As many people, myself included, have tried to call out the depravity that is slowly becoming normalized in society, particularly under the branding of inclusivity, the thing we need to realize is that there is no end game here. There is no boundary. There is no line in the sand. Having the attitude that you should be able to have whatever you want just because you want it is the mindset of a toddler. And we've had far more success in past generations who raised kids to grow out of that as they became adults versus the current generation who seem to carry that belief with them throughout the rest of their lives. There is no limit when you say that all that matters is what people want and we can't say no because then you're a transphobe or you're discriminatory and therefore you must allow it or you'll be called ugly names and people will have a negative opinion of you. But that's exactly why we've gotten so far with so much of this insanity because these people have weaponized our love for others against us. They say, if you were really tolerant, you'd accept however someone wants to live their lives. Or if you were really loving, you'd be happy for anyone who wants to be a parent. And Jesus loves them, so you're a hypocrite Christian if you criticize their choices or whatever the argument is. But the reality is that truth is love facts are compassionate. The fact is that nobody in these scenarios really cares about how this will affect the baby. Being ripped away from its mother, being raised by two males who clearly have a mental illness and will not provide a foundation of development based on truth and facts, confused narcissistic adults will raise confused narcissistic children. So just as a couple of side notes, there are some things I want to point out that I know people are, are going to bring up as supposed hypocrisy. First, I did see a couple people point to the family situation of Dave Rubin because he is a gay conservative who's married to a man and they have their child through surrogacy as well. They, of course, think that none of us were outraged by this just because Dave Rubin is a conservative, which is not true. I actually saw several conservatives call this out and say that while they respect and like Dave, they do not support 
his choice to do this because it simply goes back to understanding what is right or wrong even when people you know and love are part of the thing that you disagree with. And that's also why we understand that you can't base what you support on people's feelings, which is the entire premise that the left stands on. So they have no room to criticize anyone for wavering on a position because they don't want to hurt someone because people on the left will support anything if they're told to support it and if they're told that it'll offend somebody if they don't. So yeah, even bringing this up shows their hypocrisy. But back to this particular scenario, this isn't about how people feel. It's about what's right. And disagreeing with what someone does is completely separate from respecting or loving them as a person. You don't have to support their choices in order for it to qualify as love or compassion, which again is something people on the left don't understand on any level. And the second thing I want to address is the argument of adoption, particularly as someone who is pro-life, because it is something that we argue for all the time. And it is a circumstance where the baby is going to be raised by someone who is not biologically connected to them. And then of course the question is going to be why is it okay to separate a baby from its birth mother in those circumstances but not through surrogacy? And to that I would say the choice to kill a baby in the womb or allow them to be adopted and raised by someone else is not the same as actively renting a woman's womb to grow a baby and then having someone buy that baby from them. And I think most adopted people will tell you that the biological pull to know who their parents are and know where they came from is always there. It's kind of just this lifelong process. And there are significant issues that these kids do work through trying to understand why their parent had to give them up, overcoming issues of abandonment at some level, wishing they could have been raised by the person or people who actually share their genetics. You cannot erase or minimize biology. That connection to the woman who gives birth to you is always there and there is no real way to measure it. But again, I would absolutely 100% have a woman choose adoption over abortion because at the end of the day, it's never okay to kill an innocent human being. All of this is just a clear illustration as to what happens when the definition of family gets redefined every time someone has a new idea of what it should look like, that it should be whatever we can imagine in our, our brains and that we can't say no or we're going to hurt or offend somebody. Ultimately, that's how you end up with a morally confused, mentally unstable and increasingly unhappy and unhappy unhealthy society by continuing to slice and dice the family unit. But I would love to hear all of your thoughts on this in the comments below. Please be sure to hit that like button. It is so helpful to me. I would love it if you would make sure that you are subscribed. Make sure that you're following me on all platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all the things under Outspoken Sam or Outspoken Samantha. Keep it real, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.